Today we're going to be learning about equivalent common fractions. First we're going to take a look at what common fractions are. Common fractions are rational numbers that, can, that are written in the form a over b, where a and b are both integers. a is what we call the numerator, that is the top number in the fraction, and b is what we call the denominator, that is the bottom number in the fraction. Okay, and they are both integers. The fraction line, just to remind you, means division. Okay, so this means a divided by b. But when it's written in this form of a over b, this is a common fraction. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are where you have fractions that look different, so they'll have a different numerator and denominator to each other, but they have the same value. They mean the same thing. They're equal to each other. Okay, so here are a couple of examples of equivalent fractions. In this example, I've got a half and two quarters and three sixths and four eighths and five tenths and six twelfths. All of these are equal to each other. They all have the same value. Even though they look different, they all have the same value because if you look at their diagrams over here, you can see that in every single one of these circles, half of the circle has been colored in. Even though in this one, the circle has been divided into four pieces and two of those pieces have been colored in. Here it's been divided into six pieces and three of those pieces have been colored in. It still comes to half of the circle that's been colored in. They are all equal to a half. They are all equivalent to each other. They all mean the same thing. And in every single one of these, the same portion of that circle has been colored in. Okay. So even though they look different, they do still mean the same. Here are a couple more examples of equivalent fractions. Here I've got fractions that are all equal to a third. Here I've got fractions that are all equal to two thirds. Here I've got fractions that are all equal to a quarter. And here these fractions are all equal to three quarters. And then over here I've got fractions that are all equal to a fifth. These are both equal to two fifths. These are equal to three fifths. And these are equal to four fifths. So when we're working with equivalent fractions, we're working with fractions that look different. Their numerators and denominators are different to each other. However, they are still equal to the same thing, or they're still equal to each other because they still have the same value. They still mean the same thing, the same amount out of the total. Okay, so that is what equivalent fractions are. Now we're going to look at working with equivalent fractions. If I take the, fra the fraction 7 over 18, okay, when we're working with equivalent fractions, we need to make sure that we are careful to always do the same thing to the top and the bottom of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator. As long as we do the same thing to the numerator and the denominator when we're multiplying and dividing, then the, if the fraction will remain equivalent. It will mean it will continue meaning the same thing. It will continue being equal. Okay, so I can say this is equal to something. If I multiply this, the top by six, so long as I multiply the bottom by the same thing, six as well, then this fraction will not change in value. It will still be equal. So this will be 42 over 108. So 7 over 18 is equivalent to 42 over 108. They are equal to each other. They have the same value as each other. Okay, so even though they look different, they are equal. They have the same value. Please be careful. If I were to add 6, so if I said 7 over 18 and I added 6, And I added 6 like this, and I get 13 over 24, then these are not equal to each other. If you add the same thing at the top and the bottom of the fraction, or if you subtract the same thing at the top and the bottom of the fraction, it will not give you the same or an equivalent fraction. You only get an equivalent fraction when you are multiplying or dividing by the same thing at the top and the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so when we're working with equivalent fractions, we multiply and we, or we divide by the same amount in the top and the bottom of the fraction that will make that, e that fraction remain equivalent. Okay, 
Let's have a look at an example over here. So in this example, we've got 4 over 6. And we need to work out the value of x, where x is over 18, and these are equal to each other, which means that they are equivalent to each other. Okay, as soon as two fractions are equal, it means that they are equivalent. Okay, so these two fractions are equivalent to each other, which means I can use what I know about equivalent fractions to help me to work out x. Okay, that means that I know that whatever I do to the the denominator, I must do this to the, the same thing to the numerator to keep it equal. Okay, so let's see and let's have a look and see what we did to the denominator. From 6 to 18, this, these are two values that I already know. They are two known values, so I can use those to help me to work out my unknown over there. What do I do to get from 6 to 18? I need to multiply that by 3. Okay, now we know that for equivalent fractions, we have to do the same thing to our numerator. So if I multiply by 3 down here, I must also multiply by 3 up here, which means that 4 times 3 is going to be the value of, of x, which is 12. Okay, so then I can say, therefore, x is 12. Okay, so if I were to write this as equivalent fractions, I would say 4 over 6 is equal to 12 over 18. So those are equivalent to each other. Right, now you're going to do a couple of these yourself. The first one you're going to do is question A. Over here, you've got 12 over 45 equals x over 15, and you need to work out the value of x. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work this out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in this example is we need to have a look and see what do we do if I'm trying to find out x, which is in the numerator, I'm going to be looking at my denominator to see what was done over here. So what do we do to the 45 to get 15? Because I'm trying to work out x, which is on the right, so I need to see how did I get from the left to the right in the denominator. What did I do to 45 to get 15? I need to divide 45 by 3 to get 15. So that means that I have to do the same thing in my numerator. So I'm going to take the 12 and I'm also going to divide that by 3. So that means that x must be equal to 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So if I were to write this as equivalent fractions, I'd be able to say that 12 over 45 is equal to 4 over 15. So those fractions are equivalent to each other. Right, now let's have a look at the next example. In this example, you have got 5 over x equal to 20 over 32. Again, you need to work out the value of x. I'm going to give you 30, 30 seconds to solve this. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here, I'm trying to work out x, which in this case is on the left-hand side and it's in the denominator. So I am looking at how do I get from the right-hand side of my equation to the left-hand side of my equation. And I'm going to be looking at my numerators because that's where I have two known values. So how do I get from the 20 to the 5? What must I do? I must divide 20 by 4 to get 5 which means I need to do the same thing to the 32 to find out what x is. I'm going to divide by 4 as well. So x is going to be 32 divided by 4. And that gives you 8. So this is the same as saying 5 over 8 equals 20 over 32. 
two. Okay, question C. Here you've got 6 equal to 54 over x. Now with this one you need to be aware that when you've got a number that is not written as a fraction, it can be written as a fraction by putting it over 1. Okay, if you can't see a denominator, then the denominator is automatically 1. So 6 is the same as 6 over 1. And you're going to need to use that to work out what x is in this example. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to solve this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here, we've got 6 equal to 54 over x. So as I said, the first thing we're going to do is write that 6 as 6 over 1. And that's equal to 54 over x. So now I've got a fraction equal to a fraction, and it's going to work the same as the other examples did. So I want to work out what x is, which is in the denominator. I'm looking at my numerators because that's where I have two known values. And I'm going to see how do I get from the 6 to the 54. I need to multiply 6 by 9 to get 54, which means I need to do the same thing in my denominator. I'm going to multiply by 9. I'm multiplying 1 by 9, which means that it's just going to stay, or it's going to be, be 9. Okay, so therefore, x is equal to 9, which means I could write this as 6 equals 54 over 9. Okay, question D. In question D, we've got x over 21 equal to 14 over 42. You have 30 seconds for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here we had x over 21 equal to 14 over 42. In this case, x is in the numerator and it's on the left-hand side of our equation. So we want to see how do we get from our, looking at our two known values, which are in the denominators, how do we get from the 42 to the 21 over here? We need to divide that by 2. So I'm going to do the same thing to the 14 to work out what x is dividing by 2. So that means that x is going to be 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So I could write that as 7 over 21 is the same as 14 over 42 because those are equivalent to each other. Right, so now let's have a look at simplifying fractions. When we are simplifying fractions, we're going to be also working with the same concept that we've been looking at with equivalent fractions, because when we're simplifying fractions, we are, we are actually just using equivalent fractions, but we are using special equivalent, fraction, equivalent fractions where we are dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number, like we always have to do. We always have to do the same thing to the numerator and the denominator. We're dividing by the same number until we can't divide them by the same number anymore. Okay, and we keep on doing it until we can't anymore, and that is how we get to the simplest form of the fraction, to write it in its simplest form. So let's have a look at an example over here. If I give you the, the fraction 48 over 180, and we take the numerator and the denominator, we say, well, both of these are even. So I could divide this by 2. at the top, and I could divide the, the bottom by 2 as well, and that would give me 24 over 90. Okay, so I've simplified it, 
but they still can be simplified further because if you look at this they are still both even I can still divide both of them by 2 again so here I can divide by 2 again and I can divide here by 2 again and that gives me 12 over 45 now they're both they aren't both even anymore but they're still both are multiples of 3 which means that I can still divide them both by the same number as each other and I can still simplify it further so I'm going to divide by 3 in the numerator I'm going to divide by 3 in the denominator and that gives me 4 over 15 now if I look at the two numbers 4 and 15 in my numerator and my denominator they do not have a common factor I can't divide 4 and 15 by the same number Okay, so this is as far as I can go. When you're simplifying fractions, you need to keep on going until you can't anymore. I have reached the point now where I can't anymore. I have simplified as far as possible. Now, this could have been done more quickly if I had divided by bigger numbers from the start. So if I had taken the 48 and the 180, and if I had divided, if I knew that 6 goes into both of those, I could have divided by 6. And then that would have done both of those in one step and that would have still have still have had to divide by two or if I knew that these are both divisible by 12 then I could have divided by 12 right from the start now 12 is what we call the highest common factor for these two numbers so 12 goes into both of those and if I divide by 12 it would have got me straight to 4 over 15 in one step. If you know the, the highest common factor for the numerator and the denominator, then you can simplify in one go. But if you don't know the, new, the highest common factor, then you can still get to the same point by just dividing by numbers that you can see are divisible or, or are factors of the numerator and the denominator. So Sometimes it is quicker to use the highest common factor, but if you don't already know the highest common factor, it actually is quicker to just do it step by step instead of trying to figure out what the highest common factor is first and then divide by it. So either way is fine. Right, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. So I have given you over here four fractions. And you're going to simplify each of these fractions. Remember, you need to simplify them as far as possible, which means you need to keep on dividing until you can't anymore. Until you can't divide the numerator and the denominator both by the same number anymore, then you can stop. But as long as they, they both have the same factor, a common factor, you have to keep on dividing by that common factor. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work out the simplest form for each of these fractions.
Okay, so let's go through all of those now. The first one we had was 15 over 45. Now you may have been able to see straight away that 15 and 45 are both divisible by 15. They both can be divided by 15. So I can go straight into that and I can say 15 divided by 15 is 1 and 45 divided by 15 is 3. If you didn't know that, you could have divided by 5 and by 3 separately and you still would get to the same point. You would still end up with 1 in your numerator and 3 in your denominator. Now please be careful, when you are simplifying a fraction and you end up with a 1 in the numerator, you have to write that 1. You can't just leave it out. You can't write this as 3 because a third is not the same as 3. Okay, then I've got 126 over 147. Now, in this one, it's a little bit more difficult to see what our common factor is, okay? So let's have a look and see, are they both even? In this case, no, they are not. They're not both even. So let's see if they both are divisible by 3. Remember, our rule for divisibility for 3 is if we add up the digits and they add up to a multiple of 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9. That is a multiple of 3. 1 plus 4 plus 7 is 12, that's also a multiple of 3. So both of these are multiples of 3. That means I can divide both of them by 3. So if I divide 126 by 3, that's going to give me 42. And if I divide 147 by 3, that's going to give me 49. Now, if I look at 42 and 49, those are both multiples of 7. If I divide 42 by 7, I will get 6. If I divide 49 by 7, I will get 7. So this means that this fraction simplifies to 6 over 7. The next one I've got over here is 162 over 54. Now 162 and 54 are both even numbers. So I divide that by 2, that's going to give me 81. If I divide that by 2, it's going to give me 27. Now 81 and 27 are both multiples of 3, so I could divide by 3. But I know that 81 and 27 are both multiples of 9 as well, and 9 is a bigger number, which means that if I divide by 9, I'm going to have fewer divisions to do, I'm going to have fewer steps. So I'm going to divide by 9 over here. Now 9 goes into 81 9 times, and 9 goes into 27 3 times. Now I still have a common factor, I can still divide by 3 again. I could actually over here have divided by 27, because 27 goes into 81 too. But I didn't, I divided by 9, so now I need to go and divide the 9 and the 3 both by 3, and that gives me 3 over 1. So now in this case over here, I end up with 3 over 1. Now this is different to question A where we had 1 over 3. In question A, 1 over 3 is a third, and I had to write that 1. But over here, I've got 3 over 1. I am going to write this as 3, because when we end up with a fraction over 1, we leave out that one and we just write the numerator. It's very different to when the, the, the one is in the numerator and the denominator is something else. Then we have to write the one. But when the, the one is in the denominator, then we don't need to write the one. Okay, so that's question C. Then question D, over here, we have 360 divided by 300 or 360 over 300. Now for this one, I can go straight ahead and I can say, I can see that 60 goes into both of those numbers. Now, if you didn't see that 60 goes into both of those numbers, you could have divided first by 10 and then divided further. But I'm going to go straight ahead and I'm going to divide by 60 in the numerator and the denominator. So 60 goes into 360 six times and 60 goes into 300 five times. And that leaves me with six over five. But like I said, if you did that in more than one step, then that's absolutely fine. So long as you keep on dividing until you reach 6 over 5. So long as you do divide, so long as you simplify as far as possible and you still get to the 6 over 5, it's absolutely fine. And that is how we work with equivalent common fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.